live from the Computer History Museum in Mountain View, California. It's the Cube covering DevNet Create 2018. Brought to you by Cisco. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Cube's special coverage of Cisco DevNet Create here in Mountain View, California, heart of Silicon Valley. We're at the Computer History Museum. I'm here at Laura Cooney, who's co-hosting the past two days wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Really kind of getting down in the community with Cisco's DevNet Create, which is an extension to their main DevNet uh, developer program, which is mostly network-centric. Uh, classic Cisco developers, you know, guys configuring networks, you know, the power players uh, in the enterprise and all around uh, the world as we know it. But now that the cloud native's taken off, we're here exploring that DevOps equation. Our next guest is Roel Dionizio, who's a network engineer at Stanford. Uh, welcome to theCUBE, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Love Stanford, very progressive, um, always having state-of-the-art facilities. I mean, hell, the campus gets better every year. It's like a, it's like a cathedral of yeah. build, new buildings, the new business school. It's always school. under construction. Always under construction. <laughs> Football team's been decent for the past decade, which is good as a season ticket holder. But the network drives it all, the great facilities there. So, you know, obviously you're here as a Cisco practitioner, okay? Networks yep. have been running the show for many, many years. Now comes cloud. Stanford's got a lot of stuff going on on campus. Obviously academic computing, business computing. Is there a lot of cloud going on there, and is there a lot of DevOps happening? Give us a quick take on. There's a, there's a lot of cloud, and I, I come from the infrastructure side, so this is my first time here at DevNet Create, and I wanted to get a feel for what's coming. What do I need to learn in order to make that next step to help you know, bring a better network, help students connect, yeah. help staff connect? Yeah, the network guys have all the power, always have been, but what's interesting is Susie Wee at Cisco, when she's the, um, kind of the leading the team around DevNet Create, you know, we talked in, at their last show in Barcelona about a topic that she was introducing, which I love, network ops, which is essentially like what DevOps <laughs> is, but really making the network truly programmable at a level where it's a service. Yeah. I mean, that's the Nirvana scenario, that's the dream scenario. It is. Yeah, and we, we actually, I think we, we actually have a lot of that already in place, but obviously there's still a lot of areas that we can improve, uh, especially in maybe the wireless space, and that's why I'm here, is what can I do on the wireless side to help drive that? Is there something that we can do better, more efficiently? Yeah. Well, I mean, we always do a, like, always these ad hoc, unscientific surveys, we interviewed the guy who runs the uh, stadium for the San Francisco Giants, the guy who runs the stadium for the Sharks, Levi Stadium. The number one complaint is wireless. Yes. Right? And it's like in the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's a tough one to crack. I yeah. mean, and and I, I hear those complaints, I get them, and I try to fix them as yeah. quickly as I can, but it's one of those things where you can't see it, and I think wireless is just such a robust technology that it'll work even in the yeah. worst scenarios. And that enables a lot of IOT, but also the consumer side with the students and, and the faculty. Is the strategy of Stanford to just blanket coverage of campus? You guys just look, throw the RF all over the place? We don't, we don't just put it everywhere and anywhere, we actually think about it. And it's not just in terms of coverage, it's also capacity and how people want to use it. And so we, have, we try to design around those requirements and also if we're bringing in IOT, like how, how do those devices work with wireless? Am I going to deploy something that those devices actually work well with it? I don't know. So we have to do a lot of testing, ask a lot of questions, what's the use case, yeah. where do they want it, is it even I mean, the possible? The analytics are interesting, right? I mean, you look at the patterns, they're, they're, they're humans, they're connecting. So they're all, you can see where the crowds are probably, I'm imagining you look we're at the We're not even at that point yet. We're, we're actually just looking at it. That's why I'm here, to see how how can I do this on our network? Is it possible? How do we deploy this and, and make it work with other, camp, uh, other um, schools on the campus to see whether or not it's a great use case for us? Does the schools have their own kind of kingdom kind of thing? Or how a does little it, bit, yeah. So there's some dogma maybe there. Okay, well I'll ask you a question. So as you're uh, creatively looking at the solution, if you could have the magic wand, what are some of the things that you'd want to do if you kind of think about some of the dream scenarios, sure. the futuristic kind of view. Yeah, if it was just as easy as putting it up and making it work, that would be fantastic, but we have to work with physics, radio frequency, so it's not that easy, just not, not yet. Yeah, cool. So what are you thinking about when, um, you know, there, have, there has to be like a lot of compatibility 
you know, that you're looking at in terms of like with the different campuses, what will work with what, how can you make it more streamlined, mesh-like, et cetera? Is that something you're considering? It's, it's a lot of planning that's involved, so not so much mesh, we don't do too much of that, but a lot of it has to go around with uh, the requirements of the building for one. A lot of the buildings on campus are considered historic, so we can't really place access points the way we want them Got to it. be installed. So we have to work around that yeah. challenge. And then it's getting it to the areas where people want wireless, which is also another challenge, and then budget and infrastructure. And then people start throwing devices in there that we don't even know about. So they'll want IoT, everything, you know, yeah. whatever you can put wireless on, they want that. How are you mapping, you know, for security purposes? What are you doing for that? I mean, that has to be something that you're looking at. We, we definitely have a, a network that, that's secure, which uses certificate-based authentication. We have our regular Stanford network, but we really secure the infrastructure side and allow students, staff, teachers to really try to innovate around that. So we, we don't put a lot of restrictions on a network. We do uh, protect any anything coming from the outside coming in, but going out to the internet, if they want to develop something, I mean, there's a lot of great stuff that comes out of Stanford, and we don't want to you know, inhibit that, any of that process. As a Cisco kind of champion, you have to look at the Cisco, and obviously, it's certainly enabling, the network enables a lot. Um, what are you learning here? What do you hope to walk out of here with? What sessions have you played around with? Sure. What did you gravitate to? I guess yeah. that's the question. I, I gravitated towards some of the beginner sessions, yeah. which would have to be with uh, how to program using Python. I looked at some location-based stuff. Um, maybe there's location-based services that we want to roll out to the campus. Uh, that's a big topic amongst the industry right now. Uh, and then efficiency as well. So how can I deploy faster if it's just me working on a certain project? Uh, those kind of things. And even reporting, like how can I get statistics? Yeah. Uh, how do I know how many devices are on a section of the campus or an AP? Uh, those kind of things. So something that will be easier for me and, and maybe my coworkers as well to get the information we need and then be able to deliver the services and the infrastructure faster as well. How's the tooling for you, you guys over there? Obviously, with DevNet Create, you can almost see the dots connecting. Yeah. Apps could be developed, either custom apps, mm -hmm. um, and they're different. You can't really have an off-the-shelf app. I mean, you can have general purpose, you know, EDU apps for maybe networks, but you guys have a pretty unique environment there. Yeah. So uh, are, are there apps now that you use, or are it's they coming? It's very unique. It's a, it's a big campus, so there are apps that just don't fit right out of the box, so there's a lot of custom apps. Uh, some of the stuff I'm not part of, but I do use them, and they are custom, and it's very tailored to what exactly we need. What information are we trying to get? And they build tools around that. What's the Stanford network like? I mean, obviously Stanford is a school, you know, top shelf, everything's great. They have a smoking network. I mean, what's the bank? Give me some numbers, <laughs> come on. What's the upstream? Uh, I can tell, well, we have <laughs> I mean, we know from a live streaming standpoint, we've we been We have there. a good upstream, I'll yeah. tell you that. And there's <laughs> multiple for redundancy, so at least 10 gigs for some parts of the campus. And we do get a lot of devices on wireless. I think the last number I, I've seen was around 40,000 every uh, unique devices on wireless, so it's getting larger. Yeah. Rogue devices, I mean, obviously, you know, we were talking before cameras just choking, but you know, there's a lot of power there, a lot of mm -hmm. network. I mean, I could see kids Bitcoin mining in their dorm rooms. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's what I probably would try to do. I don't mon monitor, we don't monitor what they actually do on the network, we just deliver the pipes. Yeah. You realize there's <laughs> thousands of people rejoicing now over what you just said. <laughs> I'm sure there's entrepreneurs out there. I'm not on the security team, so maybe the security team does something, but always as, a as far Hell, as I know on the wireless, yeah. we just try to deliver connectivity, and I don't want to do anything that inhibits somebody from doing a project that they're trying to do. Yeah. Because they always develop a lot of great applications, a lot of great products, I don't want to be that guy that says, no, you can't do that. Yeah, yeah. You gotta, but you got to also make sure, you don't want to restrict the creativity because you know, Stanford does have a lot of students who go out and start companies, yeah. Snapchat, you name it, they're all there. Yeah, I will see a lot of rogues, and I do go and get the bad ones, but there are some people who are trying to you know, build a network to 
create a use case around this yeah. application that they're building. And that I won't block because I know what they're doing. I tell them how you should go and approach it so that way yeah. there's no security issues. And if there if there's a potential security issue, I say, hey, you need to talk to the security team so, and so, get them on board. So you guys are lack of data school, but you're actually encouraging them, but there's an honor system kind of thing, it sounds like, if, if they kind of come clean. You guys yeah. give them some barriers to bounce around on? Yeah, I mean, we, we have defenses in place. We don't... Uh, I won't talk too much on the security side because I'm not the guy who does the security. Yeah. But you're not, you're not locking point. people down. It's not like a right. har hardcore, no. you know, no, no, no. chop your hands off. Yeah, it's not know. like we're filtering a lot of content or anything. It's, yeah. But, I mean, if you're doing something bad. It's Stanford, yeah. I mean, Stanford's cool. It'll cool. Be what else can you tell us about what's going on at Stanford that you think is um, well-positioned vis-a-vis kind of the theme here, which is take the network, move up the stack, things like Kubernetes. This is bringing kind of a new Concept. You guys are already progressive in the way you posture to the to the audience. Yeah, I mean, out the, there. a lot of the people on campus have the freedom to, uh, or I would say, enough freedom to go out and try these, yeah. like Kubernetes or or maybe uh, like Node Red, and those are the kind of things I want to see if I could leverage those technologies as well on yeah. our side. Yeah. But I I think uh, the campus is is adopting the cloud, okay. uh, so a lot of people are moving to the cloud. Yeah. I think there was uh, some pushback there, but I think people are starting to see the, the full benefits. There's of some bug that. bounties out there at all? Any incentives oh, for students? Oh, I don't students? even know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, maybe for the, for the other guys. Right. <laughs> well, thanks for coming by, appreciate Thank it. You. And yeah. good luck in your uh, journey, appreciate it. Thank thanks you. for coming on theCUBE. Okay, Stanford here talking about the network. Obviously, I know I can tell it's hot. I've been there, I can tell you the band was strong at Stanford, a great university. It's theCUBE bringing you all the action here in Silicon Valley and Mountain View, the Computer History Museum for Cisco's DevNet Create 2018. We'll be right back with more after this short break.